Last time you saw this, a few days ago, there was a big old mess right here, a pile of debris, but as you see, it's all graded out now. So the dumpster got dumped, obviously all that debris got taken care of. Uh, we got a bunch of truckloads of dirt in here and the lot got graded. So we are ready to move on, but before we do so, I wanna show you a little bit about what this new house is gonna look like. So we have our old living room. We'll have a door as our entryway. The old bedroom's over there. There's our old kitchen. When we walk this way, so this back wall will be the new kitchen along this way. The fridge will end up about there. And all of this will be living room. All the way out to this line here. Yeah, family room here, kitchen in the back, and dining room. So we move on, we walk into a doorway. There's a hall going this way. There is the garage, we'll talk about that in a bit. But if we walk down this hallway, this takes us into the big old master bedroom. It's huge. Master bedroom down here, there's a wall here, and a wall here. Here's the master bath. You walk in, it's hard to see the lines. This pop out here will be a big old bathtub with the sink on the right, a matching sink on the left. Super cool, closet at the end. And this way we have a water closet, toilet right there. And walking this way, this will be a uh, footing. Um, our lines might be a little bit off. A foot, footing, this walking closet will go out that way. You can walk in, there'll be shelving on this wall and this wall, and the safe goes in this corner. Now getting out of that master bedroom bathroom, we're gonna check out the new garage area. In that hall, you turn right to go to the master bedroom. We're not gonna turn right, we're gonna turn left. This will take us into the garage. If we go straight up this way, we'll go up some stairs right here. We'll talk about that in a bit. Right now, we're going to go right and left and down a few steps into the garage, which is in this big old area right here. The garage is going to be 1,000 square feet, which is just awesome. I cannot wait. And if we did climb these stairs up here, we'll we get into an upstairs, you can't see it, but over the garage will be an upstairs game room and over the master bedroom will be an upstairs storage room. And now that the home tour of the home that doesn't exist is over, we can get to actual construction. So this next step is digging footings and underground trenches for our underground. You can see the sewage piping running through that trench. There's a whole network of pipes that need to go underground in order to get the water where it needs to go. And obviously because it's underground, it needs to be done before the concrete pad is poured. That's right, these trenches will be filled, but then concrete will be going over the top of all of this, making it pretty permanent. Now we're out front, again, the existing house, <laughs> the existing half living room. Uh, this right here is the footing for the porch, and this pad is the garage, new garage. See the footings all the way around it. And again, that's the new add-on to the house right there. Now we have some gravel being poured out on top of that pad. It'll get spread out just like you see it there. And here's what those filled out footings look like. Between the piping, the wood, and the rebar, these guys are about ready to be poured. This footing right here, two-story footing, because it's on the outside of the house, you see? It needs to be 16 inches wide, that way, and then 12 inches deep of undisturbed soil. We have a lot of fill dirt on top of here, so the undisturbed part, like I said, minimum 12 inches, and two courses of rebar. See the one on top and the one on bottom. Moving from this footing, we have this second story footing as well, going right through the damn middle of the house uh, because it is bearing the second story, which starts up here. Now we're in the garage. There's the footing that goes all the way around it. Boom, back to this second story footing. Quick overview of a footing. First you have your vertical stake, 
which is driven straight down into the ground. Then you put up your form boards. This will be the outside wall of that footing just to keep it into place. Then you put on a kicker to keep the wall from moving uh, forward or back. And you see the rebar, which is in this case is wired onto a nail. Up here you can see rebar that is wired to the wood, hanging off of the wood. So once the concrete is poured and this footing fills up with concrete, then this wire will be snipped and the uh, wire will be tucked in. Rebar will be all covered up and good and strong. At the front of the garage, we have the garage doors. This will be a single car and there's a two car. You have footings all around these guys. Again, second story. Lastly, we look down and we see the trench for the front porch. It has not been formed up yet, but that is coming next. So today is Friday. We just showed you all the footings. On Monday, we will get those footings inspected. Once everything is signed off, we'll make sure all the footings are cleaned up. On the pads, we're putting down four inches of gravel, then we're putting down a six mil uh, layer of plastic. On top of that, one inch of sand, and then on top of all of that, a wire mesh. After that, the following Friday, everything will then get poured. That includes all the pads you see, as well as all of the footings. And here's what that stack looks like. Again, that's gravel, plastic, sand, and then steel wire on top. And now we have the actual concrete pour, which is extremely exciting. There's not a whole lot that my dad subbed out on this project, but concrete was one of them. You can see the guys running around with the pumper, filling up all the footings. And later that day, here you can see them working on that first pad. It's coming along really nicely, and these guys sure do know how to move quickly. There it is once that first pad is all dried up. Beautiful work. Once the garage is taken care of, our pads will be complete. So even though we measured like six times, we're cutting more than once because the drain and the supply line for the freestanding tub in this master bathroom are off by two feet. It's a little bit heartbreaking to tear into new concrete like that, but that's okay. It'll look the same when it's done. You won't even know. I love this drop shower pan. It just makes it a lot easier to get in and out of the shower. Not as much stuff to trip on. And check this out. A little aluminum foil on the top of these studs and you won't get any concrete stuck to them. So the slab inside the house is completely poured and finished. On top of that, we also have the footings for the porch as well as the footings for the garage. In the middle of the garage area, you can see that stack that we talked about, just to recap, that's four inches of gravel, a layer of six mil plastic for a vapor barrier, and then on top of that, one inch of sand, and then our welding wire to give it a little bit of structure. This coming week will be our second round of concrete, which is where we're gonna finish the garage, the front patio, the back patio, as well as some parking out front. So that hose is the existing water main that we had to move, which we will continue to move. Water comes in on the street. It was originally underneath a new house section, but we don't want our water main under there unprotected. So we're gonna move it temporarily that way and that trench that we have right there. And then it will get stubbed up into that pipe right there. Some of those things you don't really plan for, or you don't even think about. You use your house with your water main, don't think about it twice. But once you get into it, adding on a bunch, we don't want that water main there. So just important things to note. Now you're digging trenches and doing all sorts of stuff that you didn't plan for. As you see, that is the water main uh, end location that we're tying into. Uh, to get the water into the house. But first, as mentioned, we need to move it from its current location around through that trench. That right there is a sleeve. That is three inch ABS pipe. The reason we do that is because if there's any shifting with the temperature change or whatever, if anything happens to that pipe and it was our actual water main with water running through it, then we would have problems. So that sleeve is going to go around our one inch pipe that will run in the middle of it into the house. Okay, we're getting ready for tomorrow's pour. So similar to what you saw, we have everything formed up. We added, since the last time, forms for the sidewalk, uh, for the front parking area, and then as well as the back patio and uh, the walkway that's gonna go around the side of the house. So we're just cleaning up our last few things, getting ready for tomorrow's pour. We expect about four concrete trucks, maybe more. That's my dad. And just like that, the garage pad is being poured. 
you can see them finishing it on the right side and they're still using that pumper to get the concrete all spread out. Here's some more finish work. You can see them hand troweling it. Really impressive stuff. I have to tip my hat to these guys. If you've ever done any sort of concrete work, you know how much of a pain it is. You're bent over, stooping over all day long. It's typically a hot summer when you're doing it like this. Not fun stuff, but it's definitely a necessary evil if you're building a house. And look at that. Beautiful stuff. Uh, we're very happy with the way this looks. So now all of the major pads are poured as well as the walkways, this one leading up to the front door. But in the back, you can slightly see the one that wraps around the back side of the house. Here's our front porch, little walkway. There's for parking cars up front. Here's the garage. Here's the old pad, the actual house. Little back patio back here, as well as a walkway. It goes all the way around the house. This extends back. There's a repair job. This extends back again to the parking area up front, as well as these two steps to get to this elevation. And the pad is complete. There you see the finishing touches on the garage, as well as the little parking pad of concrete up front. See all the expansion joints, all the finish work. If you notice, you can also see some lumber sitting on that parking area because yes, framing is next. It's happening. So thanks so much for watching guys. We're not even close to being done obviously. We are just getting this thing started. Walls are going up real soon. Stay tuned for that. See you guys next time.